When, when most of us think of religion in America, we think of plurality of faiths embracing believers and non-believers, but Harold Bloom, professor of humanities at Yale University and of English at New York University, detects a, quote, religiously mad culture, unquote, with a unique set of beliefs. He explains his findings to the American religion, the emergence of the post-Christian nation, and we are pleased to have him here with us. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank well, you. thank you, sir. Um, Tell me what you mean by the American religion, because I mean the essential focus here is on Southern Baptist and Mormons. Well, there are indeed uh, more chapters on the Southern Baptists and the Mormons than on any other American denomination or sect, but there are also considerable treatments of Pentecostalism, right. of Seventh-day Adventism, to some extent of Christian science, certainly of the various African-American varieties of uh, religion. I mean, of course, religions that are indigenous to the United States. I mean different versions of an emergent national faith that I think has been developing now since the early years of the 19th century and it seems to be reaching a culmination in recent decades. Perhaps. And you, uniquely an American phenomenon. What we call mainline Protestantism in the United States is of course European right. Protestantism. Um, even though the Southern Baptists and the other Baptist groups in this country claim to be thoroughly traditional Christians, claim indeed to be the only traditional Christians, uh, their beliefs are as uniquely and surprisingly American as the much more obviously original, the quite shockingly original Mormons of the 19th and 20th century are, as the Pentecostals clearly are. Um, there are a number of stigmata, one might say, uh, of the American religion which surprised me uh, intensely as I went along. My own starting point in writing the book was reading a Gallup poll which shocked me but which is confirmed by many other polls which showed that our country uniquely in the world is one in which 88, sometimes 89 percent of us, men and women alike, of all denominations and sects, believe that God loves him or her on a personal and individual basis. Yeah. Now that is um, an astonishing statistic, that's an astonishing fact that I think is the deepest element in our spirituality and ultimately perhaps the most frightening. The individuality of it. Not just the individuality of it, but the conviction of a personal and intimate relationship with the divine, whether that be Jesus or a father God or in the eyes of some now a kind of mother God. Also, the, the major elements in the indigenous American religions, which actually comprise about 30 percent of our population now, and I believe, by the way, that they are very close to the 30 percent, the irreducible 30 percent that George Bush continues to show in the polls. That is to say, from about 1979 or early 1980, they have been firmly in the Reagan-Bush camp. There are only three pages out of the 288 pages in my book concerned political matters. Yeah. But why do you think there is that connection between oh, Bush? I, I think it is a very deep kind of connection. I think it was forged. But here is a man who comes out of the Eastern establishment of America. Here is a man, Pres indeed, Prescott uh, Bush, who is a an, senator absolute, from Connecticut. an absolute hypocrite, a supposed Episcopalian, but a person, so far as I can see, of no sustained beliefs of any kind whatsoever, though I suppose one shouldn't say that about the President of the United States of America. But you did. Though I did. Uh, Mr. Clinton, I believe, is a Southern Baptist of the moderate persuasion, not the majority fundamentalists right. now governing the convention. Yeah. You should, I have you should not say, I should interrupt you to say that there's a big split in the Southern Baptist community. Oh, enormous community. split. And, and one, one chapter of my book called The Controversy uh, is devoted entirely to that. In 1979, with just a bare majority, the fundamentalist, or as I would call them, know nothing uh, Southern Baptists, took over the denomination completely. These are people who believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible. Well, they say they believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible, Charlie, but I don't think uh, that is the case at all. I think they believe in no interpretation of it whatsoever. I don't think they read the Bible, in fact. They believe in their own social, economic views and strong personal prejudices, which they then believe they can find confirmation for in the Bible but there are no sense of the word Bible readers. It is the poor moderate Southern Baptists who indeed have strong mystical proclivities and who really do represent a very vital and intense and organic American kind of faith who are being shut out and who indeed have lost control. And what do they share with Mormons? Well, they share elements that have caused me to believe, even though no one is going to welcome my saying so, and indeed I am being 
lambasted by reviewers of all sects and denominations right, sure. and persuasions. But I expected that. Uh, it seems to me that if you write a book like this, you must expect that, and you will get only what you deserve, and that's, that's all right. Um, if one believes that there is something deeper than the soul in one, that there is, as it were, a kind of magical or occult self, which is the best and oldest part of one, and indeed goes back before the creation of the world, so that already it is in some sense part and parcel of God himself, or Jesus himself. If one believes that one has a direct experiential knowledge of the divine, rather than a faith or belief that something is so, which is historically grounded, which is the more traditional right, European right. Christian view. And the mainline American. And the mainline American, which is, I believe now, and this also has caused me to get lambasted, it has no spiritual vitality whatsoever. It is, as I say, not a live bird you can hold in your hand, but just a dead bird on the shelf. Okay, it, well, but I can't let you get away from that. I mean, that you, this, you, when you talk about mainline Presbyterianism and Methodism, you're Methodist, you're saying that it, they're dead? That I they, think they are There's no vitality, there's no spir they nothing going on there? Dead. They, they, they have produced no new thoughts. They have, they, they have indeed a social concern. It, it is one of the terrible ironies, I think, um, of our current religious situation in this country, and it's the, the irony that my book explores throughout with an inevitable ambivalence, which I think the reviewers have not been able to catch, that the mainline groups tend to be more liberal in social and economic and political terms. It's um, hard not to be more liberal if your reference point is the fundamentalist, right? If your reference point is fundamentalist, evangelicals, Pentecostals, majority of the Southern Baptist Convention, whom Vice President Quayle addressed with the usual... Yeah, but so did Republican Ronald Reagan and, and everybody and so, else. Right? And so did Bush, weeping bitterly a year ago in front of them, and thus earning their esteem again. Um, the groups that constitute what I would call the American religion are, I think, simultaneously spiritually more intense and vital on the one hand. And you admire that about them. I admire that intensely. On the other hand, I think that the political, social, and economic consequences of their beliefs are very deadly indeed. Yeah. Now, tell me what you think of the founder of the Mormons. Ah, Joseph Smith, I think, is perhaps the most misunderstood and undervalued major religious figure in the history of this admired. country. A man to be admired. A man to be immensely admired. A man who I believe, and this is of course traditional, this is not going to get me much liked in Salt Lake City, but I doubt <laughs> yes. that I can ever show up in Salt Lake City again anyway. Well, well listen, I was there you're making enemies half, everywhere. I'm afraid so. I'm afraid <laughs> Harold, so. Harold, you might as well just I'm afraid so. If Joseph Smith were to appear in Salt Lake City tomorrow, they would run him out pretty quickly, Why? my dear because he stood for a vital and open state of continuous revelation, which they still honor only in lip service, as it were. They have become the church dogmatic. The betrayed its founder. Oh, very deeply its indeed. Prophet. Very deeply indeed. Of course, this is an extremely complex betrayal, because yeah. this is the most secretive of major American denominations, and also possibly in terms of the actual amount of wealth that How has managed you, to accumulate uh, the most shockingly successful. As you can imagine, I know a lot of Southern Baptists and know a I lot of people so, yes. from uh, my yes. home state. And these are good and God-fearing and decent people, oh, a, yes. a lot of them are. Oh, yes. And the fact that they take they take their religion seriously, the fact that they, they and in many, 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 many cases... Their religion they, is alive. It is alive, yes. and it, it provides for them, in many, many cases, uh, a, a moral and ethical code and reference that, that is positive, oh, yes. constructive, and to be admired. Oh, in, 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 uh, absolutely, and indeed, uh, th there are two heroes in my book. One is Joseph Smith, right. and the other is a remarkable man named Edgar Young Mullins, who at about the turn of the century and in the early years of the 20th century, became in a deep sense what you could call the belated spiritual founder of the Southern Baptists, even though they preceded him by several generations, and that in the axioms of religion and other books, he set forth a series of visions of what he called soul competency and the priesthood of the believer that really to this day mark moderate Southern Baptism right. as one of the world's great faiths. Uh, that has been totally betrayed now by the Southern Baptist Convention, which has thrown out the priesthood of the believer and has thrown out soul competency and has removed from the individual believer 
the right to read and interpret the Bible for himself or herself. What do you mean by the emergence of the post-Christian nation? I mean, are, are we going towards a post-Christian nation? No. Think? We, we will, in fact, I believe that these groups who currently are about 30% of the population, right. they convert enormously all over the world. I, I had originally intended to write a final chapter for the book called The American Religion Abroad, but I found that the material was just too copious. Um, all over the world today, particularly in the so-called third world, in South America, Africa. in Africa, in Asia, it is the Mormons, the Adventists, the Southern Baptists. Yeah, they raise a lot of money the for Pentecostals, quote, Christian missions. Yes, who are in fact converting people by the many, many millions abroad, and they are converting and multiplying in this country. Is I that bad? It is not bad, religiously speaking. I think it represents the religious future of this country. Look, the, Ro the American Roman Catholic Church does not like to talk about this, but as yep. fresh waves of Hispanics right. hit our shores, the vast majority of them increasingly become Pentecostals. Which is, that is right? They leave the Catholic Church and become Pentecostals? Yes, yes, yes. I, yeah. I, I, I do not know the full statistics of this, but they are, in fact, an overwhelming kind of a phenomenon. I think that that will get to be an even larger and larger thing. Because and because what? It seems more vital, it's more real, it seems more exciting. Pentecostalism is, is perhaps currently at this time the most vital of all of and the... That in, do they include the Charismatics? Yes, they, they, they are Charismatics. They are people in direct touch with the Holy Spirit. Right. They, they are people who indeed shout when the Spirit hits them. Yes, right. indeed. I've, I've, I've seen that. Yes. Let, me, let me raise a couple of points. You have this enormous gift for reading. No, I am a fierce and addictive reader, yes. Yeah, but I th I, don't you have a reputation for reading faster than any human being alive or something? I, uh, in my youth, could read at a shocking rate. Occasionally... What's a what shocking rate? Well, there was a time when I could read at about a thousand pages an hour. I will be 62 in a month, and I have slowed down to considerably. what, 750? Well, I'm not quite sure. I haven't yeah, clocked but, myself <laughs> recently. But do you, and you, it's like a major league pitcher, you yeah. know. <laughs> Poor Mr. Scott Sanderson <laughs> right. these days seems to have it's lost no the fastball. It's no longer 90 miles an hour. It's now yes, down to dear. 72. It's down to about 60, I'm afraid. Now, yes. do you retain stuff? With oh, a, I, I, I have a shockingly retentive memory, yes. Yeah. And, and anything that I've read, if I choose to record, I will record. Yeah. Not on a photographic basis. Yeah. I, listen, I, there's so much I want to talk to you about, but finally, as I go out of here, because I'm up against the sure. clock, you sure. are a non-believing what? Oh, I am a Jew. I would not call myself wholly non-believing. I am not a normative Jew. I, I, I don't believe in any of the American varieties of Judaism. I, I think that what we are offered as Judaism, not just in this country, but in Israel, is based upon, as I've said elsewhere, an extremely strong misreading of the Hebrew Bible undertaken in second century Palestine. The American Religion by Harold Bloom, uh, a fascinating man, and I'm pleased to have you here. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very Jim. much. Don't leave yet. Let me just go to the break here. Sure. As I said, the American Religion, the emergence of the post-Christian nation, uh, not easy reading, but if you want to know more of what he thinks, uh, delve into it, and you'll have some interesting ideas about a religion in 1992. We'll be right back. Stay with us.